Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're looking at the first ever simulated image of a black hole created by an absolutely incredible scientist by the name of Jean-Pierre Luminet who also wrote the article right here about the effects of super fastly spinning black holes. I've talked about this in one of the previous videos but you can find this article that's totally worth reading in the description below. Anyway, today we're actually talking about the most, or I guess in my opinion, the most unusual black hole out there in our own galaxy that was discovered back in 1992 but has actually since not really been that well studied because it's sort of far away. Its distance from Earth is approximately 30,000 light years and that's about pretty much the center of our galaxy from where we are. If you know anything about black holes, you know that um, we might have about 100 million of them in our galaxy, but because they're not really emitting that much radiation, it's very difficult to see them. There might be a black hole within about 30 light years away from Earth, but we're gonna have trouble finding it. This could be one of those black holes, this is just a simulated one in Space Engine, um, but um, we're not going to be able to find it without any advances in technology. However, the black hole I'm talking about today, that's located in this direction from planet Earth um, is one of those black holes that has a, another partner. It has a, a very large star orbiting with it and this is how we were able to see it because of the effects it had on its partner. Let's jump into it and let's take a look at what's happening here. So first of all, you'll notice that um, the partner is relatively close to the black hole that is right there and uh, because of this it's actually losing a lot of material, it's losing a lot of mass, a lot of the star material is being kind of sucked into the black hole and that produces really really powerful astrophysical jets. And although they might not appear as powerful here, they are very 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 strong. And all of this is because um, it's literally just eating away um, at this star next to it. And because of these jets, this black hole is now also known as a microquasar. It's essentially pointing its jets at us, just like this, and we can see the radiation coming from this black hole, and this is how we were able to detect it at such a faraway distance. But this is not actually the weirdest part about this black hole at all. Today we know that this is one of the fastest spinning black holes out there. Its actual spin is so fast that if it's on even like a point of a percent faster, it would not possibly exist. It would probably just disappear completely. It would fall apart. We believe that this black hole spins at something like 1,150 times per second. Now this is with a size of about, um, it says here about 80 kilometers in diameter, so that's about maybe 40 kilometers in radius. And at the same time, uh, this black hole is also very massive. It's one of the most massive solar mass black holes we've discovered. Its mass is about 18 masses of the sun. But if you were to look at the edge of this black hole, this right here would spin 1,150 times every single second. That's how ridiculously fast it spins. This is essentially almost the limit. And because of this ridiculously high spin, this black hole also uh, produces really strong dilation effects, specifically things like time dilation. If you've watched Interstellar and also if you read this article that I posted about the warp science of Interstellar, you'll discover that spinning black holes produce a lot of unusual effects. Some of those effects um, could one day be used by humans or I guess whatever aliens discover a way to approach black holes to produce pretty much unlimited energy. I've discussed this in a video you can see above my head, that's a video on halo drives. The quick summary, if you don't want to watch it, is that, and by the way, you probably should watch it because it's another really awesome study, but the quick summary is that if you were to fire a laser or really any power source at the region of a black hole right here, known as the ergosphere, it would come back to you with more energy than you gave it. And you can use this to accelerate, you can also use this to produce ridiculous amounts of energy out of nothing by taking away the energy from the black hole itself. Now this only applies to spinning black holes though, and every time you steal a little bit of energy from this black hole it will actually spin a little bit less fast. 
Now, because of its mass and because we are talking about a mass of about 18 masses of the sun, it will take a huge amount of energy to slow this black hole down. So there's a lot of energy to be taken here. And also because of its spin, if you were to actually be right at the edge of this black hole, so I guess kind of right here, you would also experience um, quite a lot of time dilation. This is when the time for you um, starts moving differently and if you were to leave this region, you would actually find yourself in the future. Once again, kind of like what happens on the Miller planet in Interstellar. Maybe not to that extreme though, but quite noticeable nonetheless. However, because this is a solar mass black hole, if you were to come this close to it, the tidal effects here would actually rip you, and not just you, but even your atoms, into pieces. Today, most scientists refer to this effect as spaghettification, and here's a somewhat interesting picture trying to depict it. Your body will start experiencing tidal effects, or effects of gravity, different at different places, and at some point even your atoms will feel different effects, and this will stretch your body and your atoms into this long spaghetti-like shape that will eventually get sucked into the black hole as you're experiencing this very miserable, miserable death. Now, we don't really know um, if we'll ever reach the point when we'll get to actually see anyone die from this. Probably not. But nevertheless, though, um, just the fact that we know that this is something that happens is quite remarkable. Now, I personally definitely hope that one day we'll be able to use similar black holes for extraction of energy and, of course, space travel, but um, it's probably not going to happen in my lifetime simply because the closest black hole to us would be at least maybe 30, 40, 50 light years away, and getting there would take, I don't know, at least a century starting today. I don't know if I'll live that long, but you never know, right? Anyway, so um, that's the black hole that is probably the weirdest and the fastest spinning and also the most massive solar black hole that we've discovered so far. This is definitely one of those black holes that will most likely teach us about these unusual uh, phenomena a lot more. But most importantly, we're hoping to discover a similar black hole very close to us. That black hole would actually teach us even more and possibly would allow us to travel across the galaxy way faster. If you'd like to explore this particular star system by yourself, um, this is available in Space Engine, which is a free tool that I used here, and the name for this is GRS1915 plus 105A. Um, and as you can see, uh, this is the binary that we have here. And by the way, these are uh, binaries that we refer to as X-ray binaries because uh, this is how we discovered that this was a black hole. It was producing so much X-ray radiation that it was impossible to be explained in any other way. The only way that these X-rays could be created is if the star was losing all of this mass, it was falling into the black hole, and as it was falling into the black hole, it was producing tremendously powerful astrophysical jets that we then detected in X-ray radiation. So that's basically it for the fastest spinning black hole in the galaxy and potentially one of the fastest spinning in the universe. Now it still is not as fast as the black hole in Interstellar, but that black hole was spinning a little bit beyond the limits of real black holes. In other words, it shouldn't have been spinning that fast. Read more about this in the paper that I described previously and find it in the description below. On that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about black holes from this, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys uh, watching space videos and wants to learn more about space through simulations, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.